Welcome to another vlog and I'm super excited for this one because this is gonna be extra special I am kind of far away from Maputo I am in the beautiful city of Beira which is the capital of Sofala province and the second largest city in Mozambique so I basically came here for work and I thought I would take my Saturday to make a vlog and show you guys around because obviously duh why not <laughs> Okay, let's do this part and then I'll do the intro again. Did you do it with the thing? I think I did with the thing. And because I wasn't born here, I'm not the most reliable source to talk about the city of Beta. Therefore, I'm gonna be joined by the beautiful Chantel. Hi. She'll be taking us around and giving us insights about her hometown. How are you, Chantel? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm good. Say hi to the vlog. Hi, people. <laughs> And I know you must be like, oh my god, she's from Beira and she speaks English. And I've told you guys about that on my previous video. But Chantel, why do you speak English? Well, I speak English because I lived in South Africa for seven years during my high school period. And then I went to study abroad and then I moved back here. Okay, so in total, how long have you been away from Beira? Probably 12 years just as just as long as i've lived here so <laughs> so she's probably not the most reliable source either but she's the only friend i have in beta so she's gonna be the one to show us around sorry guys and we have a lot to show you right now we are in this beautiful place called parque urbano do rio chiveve which hands down is the best place to visit in the beta and even though i'm just i just got here i've been here for a few days since I saw this from the roads, I was like, I want to go there. And today is a Saturday, is a good day to come here. And it's beautiful. One of the most beautiful constructions in the city of Beira. And I wish we had something like this in Maputo. So basically the place is divided into three bacias. I don't know how to say bacias in English. <laughs> what? Bays? Ba no, Bahia, a bay. Bacia, a something. So three zones, right? We went to zone three first and I'm gonna show you guys what zone three is like. Oh, no, we here. Yeah, it's so big. It's huge. So you're gonna see this and then you have to go. So we are, they say this though. Oh, like How? In the middle of nowhere. In the middle of nowhere, Maning. Ah. Campo de Golfe. O Campo de Golfe é aquele que tem perto de casa, né? They have 
have an outdoor gym which is not open yet probably because of covid but this is amazing <gasps> so cool now i suddenly want to come and live in beta chantelle what do you think <laughs> so nice this is definitely not covid friendly love it zone one because we wanted to see the the mangrove and a little bit more of the graffiti and i'm just i'm just shocked at how beautiful it is chantelle lives here but she had never been to the park of course why have you never been to the park i don't know just the lack of time <laughs> today she's being a tourist in her own city with me and we are just obsessed with this park it's so beautiful it's so well taught so well built Hands down the best, best, best place to come if you are in Beta. So let me show you guys around area number one. Basia numero un. He's so scared. <laughs> city center there's a lot to show you guys around there and while we go Chantal do you want to tell us a few facts about the city of Beta that you think it's interesting for the subscribers to know um, things that come to your mind when you think about your hometown um, very people mm -hmm. first of all first thing that comes to my mind is that we're very hard-working people okay why do you say that I just feel like the, the whole life here revolves around, around what it's hard, or like working, hustling. hustling, and stuff like that. Yeah. At least that's the first vibe that I get. People are not very like into entertainment as much. Okay. They like a party and even like going out for restaurants and stuff is not the most common thing. Yeah. Here. Yeah. So, so you're more chill. Than yeah, we're more homebodies. Like. That just like work okay. Monday to Saturday. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gosh. It's, but it's very like it's very comforting. I mean, it's the culture of the place. How would you compare it to Maputo? Because you've been in Maputo for a while. Yeah. How would you compare it? I'm a definitely completely opposite. Yeah. I feel like Maputo people go out for like lunch during the week. Yeah. Quite often. Yeah. Or like just stop to have a beer. Yeah. Randomly during the day. Mm -hmm. But. Locals here don't have that vibe, hey? Like most people have lunch at home every day. Okay. It's very like regrado. Okay. That's cool. Another fact besides working hard? Um well something quite kind of interesting yeah. is that we have um some beautiful Yo, this traffic light. <laughs> we have <laughs> so cute. Oops! <laughs> This traffic light is so cute. What is it, old school? It's just so like plain and bare, like. <laughs> anyway. Isn't that like how all the traffic lights look like? Not really, they usually have a hood. Oh. They usually look like bigger. We haven't changed the traffic lights in a while. Yeah. Number two. Fact number two is that you've got a lot of hidden beautiful gems here yeah of architecture okay some very 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 old buildings mm -hmm. that haven't been like revamped re yeah re re re, re um re rebuilt re rebuilt yeah or the or, other word um they just abandoned buildings yeah yeah they very they very old but they are 
quite popular like outside of Mozambique I need to hold it as, as like modernist buildings oh. and they're quite like they used to be quite um, ahead of their time when they made oh. them so I'll probably show you some of those they're very very beautiful nice I love seeing old buildings and just ruins mm -hmm. with historical um, historical whatever references references yeah, yeah. like colonial buildings because they yes. had good taste back then yeah. they were like they, would, they cared about the details and all of that now it's all just brutal yeah now it's all very like square and boring but yes. it's fine it works um, what, do you, what would you think is the third fact uh, mm. third one also probably related to work is that the city revolves around the port yeah, Beira is a portuary city. Yeah, it's a yeah. portuary city. Portuary? Yeah, I hope we're saying that. <laughs> portuary. Portuary. <laughs> portuary city. Portuary city. And um, I think a lot of people depend on the port for work. So you would say that the economy revolves around the port? Mostly. Mostly. To yeah. make money, you need to be related to the port. Uh, okay, not that drastically, but like... Um, most people make money out of the port. <laughs> okay. Or you're somehow related to it. So. What kind of jobs does the port... What kind of um, opportunities does the port create? Like truck truck companies, shipping companies? Definitely. There's like a shipping company in every corner in, in the city. In the city, yeah. And the transportation is also very big here. Like trucks taking... Trucks, taking, yeah. Um, just stuff mm -hmm. okay and yeah construction construction Beira is always under construction it's one of those places that are never going to stop having like, construction yeah especially because of the Idai thing I yeah it's like we're very sensitive to um, typhoons and all these natural yeah. disasters I was gonna ask because Beira is Beta became kind of known in 2018 for a, an, un an unfortunate reason, which was Cyclone Idai. Mm -hmm. And how do you think it has changed the city um, from what you see? I would say there's like a double-sided mm -hmm. sharp end to it. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, it was disastrous and destroyed the whole city. There's a lot of places that haven't recovered from the cyclone. Yeah. And, and there are places that are recovering just now. Yeah. But there were also some places that recovered very quickly. Okay. And I would say that there there's perhaps like a, a restaurant boom after mm. the cyclone. Mm, okay. Maybe people started appreciating <laughs> like good times, good times a bit more, yeah, you know? Yeah, true. So there's like this double-sided thing you know yeah to and it. how do you guys go about dealing with cyclones and typhoons because this area this region is just propensa how do you say propensa um, like something i'm gonna put the word here so this region <laughs> is this thing to cyclones and typhoons and all of those bad things so how do you think how do people from Beta deal with that? Knowing that, you know, December's approaching, there might be a typhoon. Mm. How do you prepare? How do you protect yourself? How do you move around? Do you leave your house? Do you abandon? Do you go somewhere? Do you travel? Yeah. Life goes on. I think yeah. that's, how, that's how we've maybe like adapted to this typhoon thing. Like when you know a cyclone is going to come, do you leave your belongings? Do you no. try to pack everything in a car? I, the first time a lot of people left and went to like Shimoyu uh -huh. or the other side, the, the, the in, inlands, and yeah. then they got stuck there. So And a lot of things went missing in their houses. Mm, so, so it's not safe to leave your house. No. Everybody now knows like if I leave my house, what's going to happen? Like to my things. Yeah. You know, like, someone's going to come. Someone's going to come. People are going to take advantage and like loot. Yeah, it's like a post-apocalyptic vibe, hey? Like, you see people un, uh, running with, like, DSTV dishes. From and, other like, people's Yeah, homes. and shabash, and, like... Oh, my gosh. It's really scary. I'll actually show Why you some Why do we always want to wanna steal? Because <laughs> we, we, we're a poor country. Yeah, facts, yeah. Sometimes we don't even have got food. I know. 
Yeah. So then if a cyclone is approaching, people just go through it in their house. They just hope for the yeah. best. Yeah. And you prepare like you have candles because then there's a possibility that you won't have light for you a whole week. Power, okay. And gerador, combustible if you have power that generator. power generator. Yeah. If you've got that opportunity to have. Yeah. And um, more or less that you stay inside your house, you lock your windows, make sure you've got some a few movies to watch while the whole cyclone's moving. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like what else can you do? Yeah. And oh no, we actually do prepare the houses. You do? How do you prepare? Yeah, like we put um sacos the sand over the over the, the ceiling, roofs. the roof. Okay. And we um, cover all the windows and all the doors with wooden planks. Oh. So that the doesn't break through. We have we did that like all the time. Mm -hmm. People that live in buildings do the same thing. Everyone. It's post it's really post apocalyptic. Like a day of the cyclone you just see like cars running around, people with wooden planks and like everyone's just everyone's rushing. Everyone's just rushing trying to get their house ready for yeah. the disaster basically. And they usually give you like half a day to do your shopping. Oh, okay. So they they say like your cyclone is coming. We're gonna um, give you half a day off work so that you can do shopping and prepare because you might not have food for like for like a, a while. week. Okay. So you buy a lot of food also, like rice. That's intense. That's something <laughs> that we don't deal with a lot in Maputo. I feel like geographically the region just doesn't have. Um, too many stuff like that. Lucky you. Yeah, lucky us. Don't get too excited. Global, I know. Global, global warming. Global warming. <laughs> we might be having cyclones in Maputo. Really? Touch wood. There's no wood here, so we might be. <laughs> <laughs> um. So yeah, they actually made uh, a square for Idai, which mm -hmm. I thought was really like okay, cool. Memory of all <laughs> the people memory. that passed away. Uh, yeah. And got lost. So I'm gonna show you. I'm gonna try and show you guys what it looks like from the the car and then if I can I'm gonna approach just so that you can see the mem memorabilia that's there mm -hmm. the 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 stone and what it says because this area is not necessarily safe for me to go out and hold my camera I'm just being honest yeah <laughs> someone might come and grab it from me grab you guys from me so I'm gonna try and be careful about that so let's carry on So we left the park and Chantel decided to bring me to one of the oldest buildings in town and I'm in love, guys. Look at those arches. I'm a fool for arches and I'm a fool for old buildings. So thanks Chantel for hooking me up. You're welcome. It's so beautiful. It's called Casa do Artista, which means the artist's, the artist house, artist's house. And it's in a very dead, street basically it's a hidden gem mm -hmm. definitely a hidden gem now we are going through the Makinino area which is very intense <laughs> my airbnb was actually close by here and it's just there's people everywhere there's a lot going on yeah it's nice there's a lot of uh, shops here a lot of businesses now that you have this like timer on the thing yeah that is so modern we don't have a timer in Maputo. Our, yeah in Maputo we don't have a timer on our traffic lights you guys are balling go é um é um lado né um sentido só vai seguir para lá para frente I was just gonna go back okay yeah I think that's it today no but this guy I can't yeah, go this guy there. is actually and then no, get stuck there you need this timer thing like literally it's not helping anyone go so you think if there was no timer it'd be better yes why because we you don't like evolution <laughs> we used to this disorganized thing you know yeah like, you once you try and organize something it doesn't work it doesn't work we don't want do organization
much. Enjoy. This is me, Rodan. Meu Deus. So we just finished lunch here in Solange Beach Club and we wanted to go to Farol to see the sunset. The sunset is almost over but we're going to try to catch the sunset just so that I can show you guys because you know I like ending the vlog with a sunset but Let's see if it's gonna be possible. Um, so lunch Beach Club was amazing. We had a lot of fun, a lot of talks. It makes me wanna come and live in beta, I'm not gonna lie. But I'm not gonna do that yet. <laughs> it's time for us to go on to our last spot and I'll catch up with you guys when I get there. As you can see, as you can hear, it's very windy here. Um, I think we're just gonna chill and have some drinks. I'm gonna have to wrap up the vlog here because the light is clearly leaving me behind. Um, I think this is a nice place to end the Beta City vlog. I hope I showed you enough and I think I did show you a lot. I still have to go back and edit this video, but I feel like I showed you a lot and I've had so much fun really considering moving to Beta now. I'm in love with the city, probably because of the people that I was surrounded by. Um, they all eat, they're all so happy to be here. So it makes me feel like I'm missing out by living in Maputo and not living in Beta. So fingers crossed I'm gonna come back. I hope you guys enjoyed this video about the city. And if you did so, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And yes, I'll see you guys on the next one. Mwah.